Hey, what's up guys? I'm Mercy with Discount Low Voltage and if you're looking to certify fiber optic cable the easy way, you've came to the right place. Now, if you checked out our YouTube channel, if you've seen our videos before, you probably bumped into one that's gotten a lot of traffic that you've, maybe you've watched it and it's come in handy when you got to test fiber. It's called How to Test a DB Loss. So, it's a fantastic video. Basically, the rundown's pretty much the same. The tester is a little bit different. So, it is a certifier. And nowadays with projects, a lot of public jobs, government agencies, bigger projects, they want, if they put out a request for a quote, they're gonna want it certified. So, I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. And with this tester, save you a couple bucks compared to some of the other high-end ones on the market. And you'll be able to offer certification to your customers making you some extra cash. So let's get to it. Okay, so here is the fiber certification test kit. Let's go ahead and crack that open. There we go. And on the left you have your power meter, that's the wave tester. And to the right you have your dual owl and your laser owl. What's included? Here we go. We got a little package here. What's inside this little bad boy? Got a USB cable for when you plug it in your laptop. Now that's a thumb drive with software and documentation. I didn't even use that. I'll show you guys what to do with that later. Now this does include, do not lose that right there. That's the LC screw on. We'll, we'll, we'll check that out a little later. Now what else is included underneath everything? You have a here we go. An optical power mirror certification of calibration. This is very important. You're going to need that. You should always have something like that when you buy a new tester like this. And you also have some guides as far as how to test, cleaning, that sort of thing. Now, as I mentioned, this is the power meter right here. There's a save button on off, zero units, auto. And right there, there's the screw on. That's for the SC or ST ferrule. There's the back of it. Looks a little funky, but that's because there's a case on it. So you want to go ahead and take that off when you got to replace the battery. And it does take 9 volt batteries for all three of these. And straight from the manufacturer, they do include Duracells. That's a nice touch. I hate going to look for batteries. Now there's the LC, that's the, the smaller size. The Faro is 1.25 in size. The, one, the ST and the SC is 2.5. Now today I'm going to give you guys an example. We're going to test the, we're going to certify the fiber, but we're going to certify with LC connectors. So let's take that screw off on and let's put on the LC one. And put the SC one, the ST one back in the bag so you don't lose it. Keep it in a safe spot. These are very expensive to, uh, believe it or not, to replace, so don't lose them. Okay, there we go. And this is the wave tester. There's the on and off button. Let's turn it on. Now, the other two units that are included are the light source. The multi-mode one is the dual out. And this is the SC kit. There's the SC. There's also an ST, but don't worry about whether you get SC or ST or not. Because you're always going to have a send and receive jumper. So that's out the window. And this is the 1310. This is the single mode. This one only tests one wavelength. And the other one, it's identical. And this is the dual owl. This is the 850 wavelength. And there you go. It also has the SC. There's the back of it, 9 volt battery as I mentioned. And there's, boy, well, I just mentioned the 850 wavelength. And when you turn it on, there we go. That's what it'll look like when you turn it on. Now, the data sheet, I do want to mention it's on our website. Here's a quick look at it. There's all kinds, if you want some more info, detailed information, specifications, there we go, features, certification of multi mode links, 850, 1310, multi storage up to 200 data points. And those are the supported cabling standards right there. 
and you'll we'll see, we'll check we'll dive into those a bit later on when we upload the software and the kit contents the power meter the light source the dual out the laser out and the spec page two is the specification you'll get a lot of other detailed information for example the battery life is 40 hours so it's in the download section of this product on the website discountlowvoltage.com so now we're gonna zero out the unit at first uh, this is very simple to do but you're not gonna want to forget about doing this now we're gonna zero we're gonna test 1310 single mode fiber 1310 is just the wavelength so what we're gonna start off with is a jumper now, as I mentioned, one side is going to be SC, the other side is going to be LC because we're testing LC cables today. Now, thinking about it, probably didn't need to remove that LC adapter screw on, but there's a quick look at the connectors. Go ahead and remove the cover there. Do not Keep in mind to keep everything nice and clean. Dirt and dust is the number one problem with fiber issues. So troubleshooting, you might want to look into some cleaning products. Now go ahead and plug the SC in on that side. The other side, you want to go ahead and plug your LC connector into that bad boy. Go ahead and turn the unit on. Now it should show up, there's the 1310 wavelength, that's the only thing it'll test. And as you can tell, the battery to the left shows you got a brand new battery in there. It's full. Go ahead and turn on the power, uh, excuse me, the laser owl, which is the light source, 1310. And you'll notice it says 0.10 negative dB. So you want to go ahead, and it's very simple to zero out the unit. Go ahead and just press the button, and it'll do all the work for you. That way it kind of evens everything out and knows you got a jumper in between. There we go. It's zero. Now you're set. You're ready to go ahead and test your link from building to building. Now the... Do not turn it off, okay? Leave this on. You can unplug the jumper, but you do not want to turn off either unit because then you'd have to zero it out again so nine volt battery 40 hours of battery life it's okay the battery's gonna last a little while let's go ahead and plug this in let's get to it whoa check out that loss right oh that's right it's nothing's plugged in so all right let's plug something in now for this example I just want to give you for example there's one wall box and another wall box pretend that one's a building the other's a building there's the adapter panel inside and a good rule of thumb, you're always supposed to have wall boxes or rack mount trays, that sort of thing. To, you don't ever want to mess up your link cable. It's easier to replace a patch jumper, but that's another story for another day. But right there, pretend that's your, I don't know, your underground cable that's in a conduit. Building the building. Okay. There we go. Now we have it plugged in. It's very straightforward. So we have the light source with that jumper. We didn't turn anything off. You plug it into the port that you want to test and it'll go from that building through the strand to the other building out that same port. And then out that port, the signal's going through that jumper and you're gonna plug it into your power meter. And let's see what kind of result we get with that power meter. Okay, there we go. Oh, there's a lot of loss there, but nothing's plugged in. Let's go ahead and plug this bad boy in. The LC connector. Okay, 0 0.60, 0 0.59. You want to go ahead and just press the save button. Hold it down for a sec. Pretty straightforward. There we go, zero, zero, 001. You have your first strand saved. And you want to go ahead and repeat the process and just plug everything to the next port. Now, LC originally started off as Lucent Connector. So that's kind of where the credit goes, Lucent back in the day. Now, another way that a lot of people refer to it as is LC Little Connector because it's smaller than the other ones. Now, you want to just plug it in the next port that you need to test. 
plug that jumper back in. As you can tell, this one has a .20. Press the save button. Boom! There it is, number two. You have number two saved. Okay, so before we move on, I do want to apologize for the next minute of video. It's a little loud in the server rooms, so audio is not too good. I should have brought a mic, but I wanted you guys to get a better feel for this product at the job site. I took this for with a customer and showed them how to use it, how to certify the 12 strands of single mode that were at the job site. So I wanted to save the results, and we'll get to the software. We'll print it out, and I'll show you guys how what 12 strands look like when you print out your report and what to expect. So you want to go ahead and turn it on. It's the power meter. Then turn on your laser source. There's that 10 dB. You want to go ahead and just zero out the unit. After you do that, do not turn it off. Leave it on. And then we can go ahead and get to it. Okay, so just to give you another example, sorry if it's loud in here, you're going to do the same thing. Now we're in a working spot, a work environment, just want to take a look. And we'll cruise on over here at the camera. So this is what it would look like. You would set it up, that's how you, you do it here. And you also may want to follow, probably helps out to follow a fiber optic color code. We pulled one up online, I always forget what it is. And then you want to go ahead and test from one strand to the other. When it comes to your test card, you want to go ahead and just press the save, and then go to the next strand, save, go to the next one, strand. You're also moving it on the other side, so. Okay, now that we have our 12 strands saved, let's go ahead and get to the software. Okay, so now we're getting to the software from the manufacturer al-inc.com. We've been buying from these guys for, oh, I think it's been over 20 years. They've been a good company to work with, so check them out. Now, as you can tell, there's a lot of information here on their website, the software, the literature, the videos. Now, we're looking for the Al Reporter software. That's what we need right there. And there's a little link below it. If you're having troubles with window 8 and 10, you might want to check that out. So go ahead and click on that. And when you get to the page, there's going to be a couple other examples. You can see what the software is going to do, but you want to go ahead and click that. It'll take you back to another page right where you need to download everything. Okay. So let's see, full support, USB driver support. Okay, uh, window, here we go. Let's go ahead and download that. Just take quick open when done. Okay. Ah, just fast forward. Let's just not wait for that. That's going to take forever. Here we go. Come on. Here we go. Oh. Ah. Ah. Install Owl Reporter. There you go. You want to press OK and it'll do its thing right there. Pretty straightforward and easy. We'll give it a sec here. OK. There we go. And the software should pop up here. There we go. Optical Wavelength Laboratories. Nice name. That's that's what AL stands for. So you want to go ahead and check that out. It's manuals. That's but just install the USB drivers. Click next. Pretty easy. I'm sure you guys have installed who knows how many programs. Install AL Reporter. That's what we need. Install the drivers first, then the AL Reporter next. Install next. Reboot the computer. Computer. Finish. Okay, now that our computer's rebooted, there we go, recently added. Click the Al Reporter. Bam. Let's go ahead and download our stuff. Whoa, oh, whoa. Forgot to turn the unit on while it's plugged into the laptop with the USB cable. Let's try to download again. There we go. On the bottom, you'll see it. it's searching, reading the data. Okay. Let's select the standard for this link. There's the, that's the most common one, single mode. Of course, there's all the other standards that you can select from. And there are the wavelengths I've talked about. 
This one only does the 1310 and the 850 and valid fiber types. So we're doing an indoor single mode fiber. That's what we did. You guys saw us at the job site. It was feet, 250 feet. Click next. And the number of connectors for this link, we were going from adapter panel to adapter panel and that's it. So there's two and we weren't making any splices for this link. So we're going to leave that at zero. Now this is being certified. You can go ahead and hit new organization. You buy this, this is your company or your name. You can go ahead and put in your company name there and it'll show up on the report, which is pretty cool. Discount hyphen L-O-E, L-O-W, Jesus. Voltage.com. Okay, telephone, 888-797-3697 and go ahead and click OK. Next, and you can go ahead and enter the date of when you took the test. There we go. Next, enter a link for enter a name for this link. I don't know. We'll just call it Los Angeles because that's where the uh, job site was at by LAX. A nightmare over there, traffic wise. Well, you guys would know if you've been over there. But okay, so here we go. Discount. Oh, there. This is an example of what it's going to look like once you fill in the information. Number of connected pairs, two, supply cable type, the standard, certif circuit test results. And right up there, get familiar with the buttons, they're pretty straightforward. Next. And as you can tell, it goes to the next circuit ID, number two, number three, number four, number five, six, seven. So that'll give you the report for all of them there. If you want to go ahead and glance at everything right off the bat. We don't want to delete anything, so we want to go ahead. We, we clicked that arrow button, and it took us to the uh, a circuit result summary. Pretty straightforward. Everything passed, 10. And there's the system overhead. And as you can tell, it only shows 1 through 10, but if you click the next button, it'll go to 11, there we go, and 12. Print preview, save, there's the other buttons, file, and another thing I do want to mention, there's an option here where you can in import your company logo, that's pretty cool. Software, it's not a lot of bells and whistles, it's pretty straightforward and simple. You guys should be able to pick it up. A lot easier than uh, the software I'm using for editing and making this video for you. So here we go, and you want to print it out, you want to go ahead and maybe save this as a PDF, save it. And then you can just uh, say, I don't know, what do we want to call this? Once you save it as a PDF, it's easy. You can go ahead and just, as you know, email that PDF to your customer. And we'll go ahead and save this on the desktop here and let's open it. So you can get a, so you can get a feel for what it looks like. So right here we saved, we only saved the optical, uh, we only saved the circuit summary report, okay? Now the circuit summary report just gives you one page, one through 12. It'll tell you the dB loss, which is pretty much what people want. They just want to know the dB loss. And as you can tell, Los Angeles. And on the bottom, you can have your employee, whoever did the test, autograph it, customer, date. It's a nice touch. Now, that's just the circuit summary. Go ahead, let's go back to that software. Right there, we had the loss up top. There's 1 through 12. Let's close that out. Now let's move it over to overhead. Click that arrow because that's that'll show everything here. There we go. So that'll give us all that information. Let's go ahead and hit print preview this time. And as you can tell, we're on page one. Now page one is for link one, and it'll give us all the information. Page two, all the information for page two, page three, page eight, page 12, there we go. So as you guys can tell, it'll give you all the information and pass, fail, right there on the bottom. DB loss, and you got a little bit more than just a DB loss report for just a little bit more bang for the buck. Pass, fail. I always forget about these DB, what's uh, the minimum here, so a nice fail or pass is pretty convenient. 
Okay, so there you have it. There's a great, here's a great example on how to certify your fiber optic cable link. Now, before we move on, I do want to mention, I almost forgot to comment below. Any questions you might have, go ahead and leave that there and we'll do our best to get back to you. And also don't forget to check out the YouTube channel and to subscribe. I think we got over 200 videos. Uh, I think there's a playlist with just fiber optics, so you'll really like that if you're into this kind of stuff. So check that out. Now, back to the certifier here. This is a great tester for the money. It's just a little bit more than the tester that does the DB loss. I really like it. And there's one thing I do want to mention. This is a, you know, I had a conversation with the manufacturer, and if you print out a report that says pass or fail, technically that is a certification. The one thing I do want to mention is this would be great for maybe the plant manager, the IT manager. You got to run some cable here. You want it certified. You don't remember what the DB loss uh, requirement, what's the, the most you're allowed per, per run, that sort of thing. You want to just a yes or no, whether it passes or fails. And that's pretty nice. Make it a little more simple for you. But if that's the case, um, yeah, it'd be good for those kind of guys. Maybe the smaller contractor who wants to give his customers something a little more than a DB loss, you can do a nice printout report as you can see. But if you're a larger contractor and you got to do the record a run from here, 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 all spliced together, the AL7 certifier is going to be a much better fit for you. So we're going to do a video on that one soon. So go ahead and keep uh, you know, subscribe and keep up to date. But the other thing I do want to mention is the actual standard calls out when you start looking at quotes for your larger contractors, you know, it calls out the, you have to certify the certification. The standard is actually to certify a certification is using both wavelengths for the printout. So for school districts, some of the higher and big, big, uh, you know, installs, you'll probably see that in the request for quote, you'll see the certification and they'll mention that they want both wavelengths. The single mode, there's, for example, we did the 1310 here, they want a record of also the 1550 wavelength. So keep that in mind, this only does one wavelength that is a certifier, but it's, you know, it's not to the standard that requires both wavelengths, but, you know, that's quite a bit more money. If you want something with a little bit of pow, a little bit more than just your DB loss tester, this is a great unit here for you. So can't go wrong with it. Questions, comments, subscribe, leave them below. And thank you. Later.